Coming up today on Locked On Texas Tech, maybe you're warmed up to the idea of Grant McCaslin as the Red Raiders' next head coach, but what about the guy sitting beside him on the bench? We're considering names new and old, and also a pro day unlike any before in Lubbock. Next on Locked On Texas Tech. You are Locked On Texas Tech, your daily podcast on the Texas Tech Red Raiders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're going to start this thing off right. Everything runs through love. Great to see you again on Locked On Texas Tech on the Locked On Podcast Network. Always glad to be your first listen on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts. Today's episode brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, America's number one sports book and the official sports book of Locked On. So make every moment more by visiting FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. He's the only Chris Level. I'm Casey Cowan. Hey, Chris, hurry up and wait again. North Texas still alive in the National Invitational Tournament, which means for all intents and purposes, the next head coach of Texas Tech basketball figure to be Grant McCaslin will not be announced or publicly revealed until maybe the end of the week. Talking weekend now as we've got a Thursday night NIT championship game. Hell of a game between North Texas and Wisconsin. So maybe take some things away from that if you had a chance to watch the basketball game. But uh, Chris, for us selfish Red Raiders here on Locked On Texas Tech, we are still biding our time trying to remain patient and virtuous as most Red Raiders are. Yeah, I, I think uh, I, I think now we know we, we've got a deadline. Uh, we we love we love deadlines. We, we've got <laughs> we've got some finality, some closure uh, on the way. There will not be any games uh, past Thursday night for North Texas. So this much we 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 do know. And and, and I, I think I don't know if you've said something different, but I, I it, it's interesting. Is is we kind of it all points to to something happening here with the, the next head coach and. I think you get a lot of the fan base uh, kind of like, I wish they'd lose. I'm ready to to get on to my part of the program. <laughs> and then you have another set of the fan base that is kind of like enjoying watching North Texas and rooting for them is kind of this, uh, you know, because we all get a, a, a invested emotionally into sports for one reason or another. And um, I think that, you know, that game kind of was out of hand in the first half. And then in the second half, it wasn't. I think you, you you started to see some huh, yeah, guy can coach defense. I mean, I, I I do think I do think, and I, I want I want us to discuss this a bit. I don't know if I've seen anybody close out a game on a nine minute scoring drought or holding somebody to that. Now, some of that is just bad shots. Some of that is defense. Some of that is just the the pressure you're applying. But it equaled the same. 54 points with I think 854 left final score 54 points if I'm not mistaken Chris I thought I saw was it 54 to 46 and then it wound up 56 54 or something along those lines but yeah that was that was quite the run to finish the game and hey as Tom Izzo would tell you that's just Big Ten basketball baby (laughs) Big Ten basketball (laughs) best conference in the country right Tom sure uh I I have not seen many runs like that in general in a basketball game, Chris, but to finish a game and extend your season. Yeah. I thought there was a lot on display there as far as clearly just what you were doing on the defensive end of the floor, but some tenacity, some perseverance, some toughness uh, in his team. And dare I even say, as you're seeing those things play out, you know, down the stretch second half, dare I even say that it reminded me of a few of those late to bloom in game Chris Beard teams that did eventually always bloom. But, you know, you're sitting there at halftime so many times during some of those years and thinking, well, thank God we're a second half team because that first half stunk. (laughs) But you would find a way. And a lot of that was just rooted in defense, toughness, and again, like mental tenacity where you just, you never stop fighting. And and we saw some of that. But no, that was pretty unique. Yeah. I just think he's a guy um, with the way that they play, they just find a way. You know, they just find a way and, you know, I'm watching the first half and you kind of get, you, you get thinking, uh, well, okay, it's not their night. Maybe the distractions have become too much, you know, I don't know. 
Uh, maybe Wisconsin's pretty good. Maybe you're just not as good. Whatever. And then uh, you go in and adjust a few things or kind of reset the deck. And, you know, like, hey, guys, you know, we got a pretty good chance if they just don't score like anything. Like, they just don't score any points at all. Like, I kind of like our chances. And that's essentially what happened. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, the – so they will uh, they'll, they'll play Thursday night, uh, and and I think that game is around six or seven Central Time, and that's it. And and I think uh, now now we kind of there's not been a lot of questions asked, or or Texas Tech is it has it been necessarily the topic uh, up in Las Vegas or out in Las Vegas, I should say, with with some of this media coverage. Uh, people may already kind of know what what is going to happen, so let's you know. But either way, did you hear? Uh, did you watch the game, Chris? Like entirely, or take in the broadcast? Listen I to what watched, Fran Priscilla had to say. I I did not. I was watching it remotely, so on my phone, and I was doing something yeah. else while I was at another game. Actually, when I was doing that, so maybe he did address it. Uh, I saw this little quip, I guess, making the rounds on Twitter where Frischilla said something during the course of the game of, as it relates to Grant McCaslin, he's talking about Coach McCaslin, uh, saying something like, I'm anticipating a big announcement soon. I think I'm going to be seeing a lot more of him. Obviously, Fran Frischilla calls Big 12 basketball throughout the year on uh, ESPN, if, if you don't know who Fran is. But uh, I thought that was kind of interesting. He gave you a little tip there uh, as to what maybe the rest of the week could hold. Yeah, yeah. Um... I, I I think uh, everybody's trying to be. I think the reward is just uh, respectful. I, th I think it. I think it says a lot about. Yeah, that's right. I think. I think everybody's, <laughs> everybody's trying to very be, delicate. <laughs> yeah, everybody's trying to be very respectful of. And, and part of this is because of who Grant is. I think there's a lot of people that really are fans of his. It's just as the person, and like he's just not a. He's not one of those like like many are in the profession that rubs people the wrong way or or whatever. Um, and, and and what is fascinating is that let's rewind this thing because this is going to end up being. Say we get an announcement this Friday, okay? Just just for as an example, air quotes. Would that be three weeks to the day to where? Well, no, I guess it wouldn't actually be three weeks from the day. It would actually be a little bit longer than three weeks because Mark Adams stepped down, what, the Wednesday of the tournament, uh, I think, that week. And I think – but, yeah, I think – so you're, you're a little over three weeks. Point being, I think it's fascinating to me that as we got into this search a bit when it, when it first started and names were being tossed around and you're trying to figure out what direction they may go um, – Grant McCaslin and, and Andy Kennedy uh, were, were two of those names, and they'll end up playing for an NIT championship. Uh, and, and I just looked it up to make sure it's 840, 840 p.m. on uh, on Thursday night. So, yeah, AK and uh, and 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 this Coach isn't Mike. a winner gets the tech job game, is it? Right? <laughs> like I don't, WWF style. I, I think Andy Kennedy may want uh, he may he may prefer that uh, because I think he's wanted to be that one. Looking in, yeah, that's right, that's right. But <laughs> Chris, do you? Well, go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, yeah, I was just gonna say. So I I just, I just think that part is fascinating. And look, we we have heard. Just want to address this. I, I don't I don't know what necessarily is true and what is not here but I, I i have heard like many that there's a few staff rumors and things like that but i i will tell you i really do think he's been all hands on deck with with his mean green and everything uh and 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 you know i just don't think he's gonna make too much aware or has contacted hardly anybody for fear of word getting out as he's trying to to toe the line here and and not not upset the apple cart with North Texas or whatever. That's my opinion. That's what I think. But I know there's plenty out there of, of people that think they know. Um, and I think some of that info could be true. But anyway, I just uh, – anyway, it's going to be a long why, another day and a half here as we wait. Why is Ben McCollum a name that I'm hearing over and over yeah. and over? The current uh, – Northwest what, head Missouri coach of State. Northwest Missouri State. What, what's the tie? Is like this somebody you would love to see as an assistant? I just all of a sudden this name's been on the radar. It seems like uh, in all kinds of McCaslin Texas Tech uh, circle. But first, today's episode brought to you by America's number one sports book, FanDuel. And with the NCAA tournament on and popping right now, is the perfect time to get busy, get signed up, and get started 
with FanDuel. And right now, new customers are in a prime spot to be on the receiving end of that no sweat first bet. We're talking up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet don't bank, baby. $1,000. So just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on and sign up today to claim your no sweat First bet, then you can lay it all on the line on everything from the money line to point spreads, which team is cutting down the nets, all on an app that's safe, secure, super easy to use, even if you're a first timer. So don't miss your shot at the no sweat first bet up to 1000 bucks when you join FanDuel today. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up and make every moment more with FanDuel. Why is Ben McCollum a name that I'm hearing over and over yeah. and over? The current uh, what, head coach Missouri of State. Northwest Missouri State. What, what's a tie? Is like this somebody you would love to see as an assistant? I just all of a sudden this name's been on the radar. It seems like uh, in all kinds of McCaslin, Texas Tech uh, circles. Well, so I think what is um, <laughs> this comes full circle. What is interesting <laughs> is that. Mark Adams was had an affinity for Ben McCollum's like offense and like, you know, and, and some of what they did tried to actually hire him. I think at some point over the last two years, uh, Luke Adams studied him uh, quite a bit. And, and I think, but again, I think they tried to pick up on some of the, he's been there for several years. It's a division two school, if I'm not mistaken. And they win 30 plus games or have recently. I just think he's he's I think forty one, so he's younger. So he's kind of like this is the next you know step. I think Ben McCollum also was about to be, or was offered the University of Buffalo job. Uh, he turned it down, uh, according to reports. And so I, I think, uh, but but he but now that we come to the full circle part, I think Grant McCaslin and Ben McCollum have known each other for a long, long time, and I would say they are very, very good friends. So I think okay. that is uh, that is a high probability of of happening if um, and I and I, I think uh, I think Ben McCollum either wanted too much money one or two wasn't didn't trust the fact that he would be able to actually coach the offense here uh, at Tech under under Mark and that's kind of why it just didn't work out here so I don't I don't know. I heard both. Like I, I think gotcha. he thought he just wouldn't be able to coach the offense, or two. Hey, man, he just he just wanted too much money. I don't know what was true, but it never it never happened. But yeah, his name is somebody I've been familiar with for for several years okay. now, and so that's the connection. But wouldn't be surprised at all if he's sitting next to to Coach McCaslin in, in Lubbock at some point. And I don't know him from Adam. I'm asking you because I was unfamiliar with him prior to this. But uh, having a guy sitting next to your head coach that's one national championships as a head coach D2 level in four of the previous six seasons, Chris, that would be a good thing, right? Even for a simple-minded guy like me. Like, that's a guy you think probably knows some basketball. Four of the previous six national championships. People will tell you, though, this is a big leap. D1 to Power 5 – I mean, excuse me, D2 to Power 5 D1 is a a giant step. I think – I think McCollum's teams run a a system, uh, a scheme. I I think at this level, it's, it's just right, wrong or indifferent. It's more about players. And I think if you can get players to run a good scheme and system. So I I, I do think the, you know, if if somebody can handle the defense, I think that if you, if you look at what the coach McCollum could do, maybe on offense, I I don't know. Um, But it's about players. Uh, and I think that they, they still need some folks that, that really are connected to current roster players in the portal, recruiting and all that stuff. That would be my and again, everybody's got a different role on a staff that they may, you know, Grant may say, you know, hey, right. Coach McCollum, if, if, if we make this happen, I don't necessarily need you to be the heavy lifter on recruiting. You know, just let, let's X's know this thing to death. I don't know. I, I But I'm just you're okay. asking me a question. Yeah. I'm trying to. But that's what. I think he he's he's a he's a good X's and O's guy. I think he's obviously very close to to Grant, so that that would be my thought. But again, you still need people that are connected to to some guys here. Is that a is that like a an evolution over the years as far as how a coaching staff 
is involved with the program because I, I feel like the language, at least what I'm hearing has changed a little bit when people talk about, well, this guy's going to handle the defense. This guy's going to handle the offense, like a DC or OC. Has that always kind of been how it is or has that evolved over time? Or is that just like fan fiction that we even view it that way? <laughs> I, I think, I think you hear that more in recent years. Um, I don't. I don't. I, I think as beca- as things become became more specialized, or there's more positions on a staff, mm-hmm. roles are are, are are more defined instead of being broader because there are more people that you need to like you know. Because at some point, if you don't nail stuff down, nobody knows who's in charge of anything, and you've got you've got more gotcha. people on these staffs that that than, than less, you know. Because used to, you know, which is what you're kind of suggesting, used to. It was just the three assistants. There was no support staff or the graduate assistant, like how many guys you had or video coordinator right. or special assistant to the head coach. But there's all these in-between uh, positions that th- 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 they do a lot. And so when you're in charge of these guys, if you don't have roles defined, it's a rudderless ship and nobody knows who's in charge. You can't get anything done. So I think that the roles have gotten much more specific okay. uh, and you've had to. So nobody, everybody kind of knows what they're doing and you don't have to. Let's all discuss the defense. Let's all discuss. You never get anything done. You know, so I see. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. And that I hadn't considered that the size of those who are in suits now or in polos or whatever the hell they wear pullovers yep. uh, versus what they used to be. You got to delegate. That does actually give, you know, like if you're a dimwitted basketball mind like me and you already knew <laughs> like, man, I'm never going to be a coach. But did you ever think about being a special assistant to the traveling secretary? No, you didn't, because that wasn't a position once upon a time outside of George Costanza's world. But maybe now it is. So dare to dream and keep your hoops dreams alive. Man, I'm going all the way back to the 90s. George is still working on the Pinsky file. It has to be. (laughs) Or just rubbing his eyes to look like he's busy and irritated. (laughs) With Uh, his crackers. Chris, before... (laughs) Before we move on, or napping under the desk. Yes. You just want to do a show where we highlight all the activities George participated for in at work, other yeah. than work? Yeah, I'm here for it. <laughs> uh, Chris, before we move along, we want to get to Red Raider football pro day happening and, and some of what's involved with that. I want to ask you, is there any reason to discuss the name Al Pinkins? Because I still feel like people are dangling this carrot out there in front of me on the internet, you know, these internet people. And it's very rude if it's not actually based in any reality, but I'm paying attention to it because I'm so interested in it. We talked about it before and kind of, I guess, left some window or door open possibly to Al Pinkins having a double T on his shirt again. I think he's presently employed by Ole Miss. I think. Is there any reason to talk about Al or is that ship uh, down the river, so to speak? I I would tell you that, um, he is in Oxford, last I heard. Uh, I do think employed by the Rebs and, and Chris Beard and, and, and all that. I do think, though, that if you want him to be here, he can he can do that. He can make that happen. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I can't say – I can't speak in absolutes there. I'm just going off sure. a very informed um, – <laughs> You know what? What the people that I've I've talked to say? No, if if and again, I think that is Coach McCaslin's call. I want to make that very clear. Yeah, yeah I, th- I think he's getting to decide this. I think there's people that have suggested this person's been forced on him. This person's been forced on him. This person's been heavily suggested. No, I I, th- I think this is Coach McCaslin gets to decide this. That's the way this stuff works. Uh, it, it's it's his timetable on when he wants to start doing some of this. I think he's chosen to to wait uh, a bit as his team is is still playing. That's what I gather. I think that it's his call on on how he wants to build it. I would also tell you that uh, I, I think very soon. I don't. I don't. I, the football part of this did not pass, but you're about to get two more positions that are somewhat elevated in the football and basketball world on a coaching staff because they are going to be like like assistant coaches that can get out on the floor or field and actually coach, but they're not full-fledged where they can't go out on the road and recruit. They can recruit, and so you you get a, a fourth and a fifth guy in uh, in, in basketball, and you're going to get a, an 11th and a 12th guy in football. Now, this was tabled in football until next March, so I'm guessing that basketball – my point is 
he could potentially hire the three assistants and a couple other guys that will eventually slide into those fairly meaty roles that are the, the only difference between them and an assistant is they just can't get on a plane and go see a prospect or whatever, but they can do everything else, including get on the floor and actually lead a practice coach, uh, all, all the stuff okay. that an assistant coach would do. And so they're, they're, you know, like, like think uh, this year, like Sean Sutton could have done this. Daryl Dora could have done this, but they have to, they have to be off to the side. They can't necessarily get in, involved in too much of the recruiting process. But now you can get, <laughs> get them off to the side. Well, seriously, get out they, the shot. And, Stand yeah, over there. <laughs> yeah, and and there's the, there's folks that monitor that. Like who's out there right. on on the actual court and 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 coaching players or you know all that stuff. I mean, it, it's monitored. But I think that is something that I think is worth mentioning here too. There's like a NCAA hall monitor in the rafters with binoculars trying to identify who's down on the floor. Hey, and by the way, you just described like a college basketball coaching job without having to recruit. And so I'd just like to submit my application right now, coach. Uh, I'm ready for that kind of thing. I always thought it'd be hell to be a college coach, having to travel around and kiss the ring of these 16 year olds and their handlers year round. But if I could do everything but that, I'm in. So just let me know. You can hit us up right here on YouTube, Coach, if you're interested in something like that on the Locked On Texas Tech YouTube page. Okay, Chris, there's some interesting nuggets to chew on uh, there as we continue to process what could be on the other side of hopefully soon to come resolution with your head coach as this week progresses. So make sure you're subscribed to Locked On Texas Tech on YouTube when it does go down so you miss nothing. Okay, we're going to continue to roll ahead as we look now to the football side of things here locally. Professional aspirations. We could go pro. We will be pro. There's my Steven Ignacio impression. I just had to get it in because we're talking pro day. We're talking Red Raider football on the other side on Locked on Texas Tech. Joining us on Locked On Texas Tech on the Locked On Podcast Network, Chris Level on Casey Cowan coming at you from west of the 100th Meridian, where it's really going down. Chris, today in West Texas, pro day going down. Red Raider football players with an opportunity to showcase uh, what they got going on for those professional interests and. Kind of an interesting time here as we're talking about what could be happening here in Lubbock, but also a, a bigger picture was some interesting stuff happening with the conference at large uh, as far as a, another type of pro day gathering, maybe in the future, some innovation there once again at the behest of Brett Yormark, but uh, always an exciting time to see maybe who's going to get some attention and, you know, something I'm, I'm sure that since the time you started uh, covering Texas Tech football has really evolved as oh, far yeah. as what's going to happen today on campus. Well, and and I I love the term behest, uh, very underutilized. Well done there. Um, <laughs> yeah, point for Cowan. Um, I like you, and you're easily entertained. <laughs> I, uh, I I think this is a, maybe one of the most unique pro days ever for Texas Tech football, and I say that as in, a, and I really do mean ever, uh, because. You, you know what what happens like say you're at a high school and you and you're playing you know varsity football and you just happen to have a teammate that's just he, he's he's got all the scholarship offers he's got so many people coming by and 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 what happens is is that the people the college recruiters that come by they they see Huh, well, well there, there's some we're not going to get the the main guy here but there's some other kids over here that are pretty good that can play and and i think it, it it's all so what, what you have here is you have tyree wilson that i i would be willing to bet that there are 30 every, every team every team represented uh, in pro day today in, in lubbock texas every nfl team and that is rare. Uh, sometimes you get the majority of nfl teams but you have a, a bona fide top 10 pick sitting here i mean so much so that he's a top 10 pick i think that he's not even going to go through everything like yeah i don't i don't need to to do the bench press or the or the this or the that because yeah watch the tape boss measure me you know like i mean I, i'm i you know it I mean, he's got it so at this point you're just trying not to screw it up you know and i, I do think that he's got 
you know, he's still recovering from his foot injury and all those things. But uh, I, I saw him over the weekend with a big old smile on his face, and he still looks like a gazillion dollars. I mean, it's just it's just like right out of a lab, man. Uh, and so he's been here doing what he can. I think he'll interview well, all that stuff. So anyway, he'll be a limited participant. However, that doesn't change the fact that everybody is here. And so if you are – wanting to work out, you know, and, and like get in front of these NFL people, they're all going to be able to see you. And I think that is w- worth a lot because it is a, an extremely important job interview. And when you think about this conversation, Cowan, it's not, it's called pro day, right? It's not NFL day because think about the USFL, the XFL, all the other opportunities that are out there uh, for these kids to, to, and, and like prime example, Jonathan Garibay, and Trey Wolf are both going to to participate today. They're going to kick for these scouts. Interesting. Yeah, yeah and, and I mean, you, you think about how many teams are out there, the the NFL, but the, the USFL, the XFL, the, the, these kids can – I mean, they can provide something to somebody, man. I'm just telling you. They're, they're really good at what they do. Strong leg. The Dallas athletes. Cowboys, possibly? <laughs> they need one. Sorry. No, I – don't get me riled up. I just uh, remember what our kicking game was. Both like. of these kids can make extra points. I can tell you that. <laughs> um, but the, the 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 two names that I think Tyree's going to be a, a bona fide first rounder, possibly top ten, as we talked about. The other two names, though, that I think are very in, intriguing to NFL people is Sir Roderick Thompson. I think he lit it up at at, at the Senior Bowl. Remember, he's the I don't know if you're familiar with the story, but it's like he wasn't originally supposed to play in it. There were some injuries. They He was kind of all alternate. They literally call him, fly him up there. He gets off the plane, is issued kind of practice gear, and he's on the field within like two hours. I mean, it's just like wild. And I think that, I didn't know he, that. <laughs> he did really, really well. And I think everybody knew of his – hey, is that the kid from Tech? He just got here. You know, and I think that that was really good. He caught it well out of the backfield. His deal will be about 40 time. You know, that's that's what it'll come down to. He will interview well. He will – I think he, he's productive. You look at the tape, he's a very productive player. He wasn't overused. It'll just come down to 40 time. I think uh, the other one is Marquise Waters. I think he will interview off the charts. He's a brilliant kid, very smart, and extremely productive. Again, will come down to 40 time and how, how NFL teams decide to – you know, you use him. Is he a, is he kind of an outside backer? Is he more of a an outside? You know, uh, if he's more of a safety, is he? You know, I mean, just just what what exactly do they view him as? Uh, based That's why I'm worried about Muddy, a guy I'm a big fan of, but I just I don't know what he fits into. Yeah. I don't know what role he's he's built towards. I'm I'm concerned he could get lost kind of in that uh, in between, which could still mean you can be a professional football player or a you know, a, a consistent special teams guy and be on a roster every year. But I that, that's interesting because I think he's kind of, I don't know if you'd call him a tweener or what, but no, I think that's yeah, sort of in between there. He's, he's not quite big enough to be a, a true linebacker and he's not fast enough to be a true safety kind of thing is what you're saying. So it, it is a tweener. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's best cast, which is why he made so many plays as a, as a kind of inside the box uh, safety, kind of a hybrid type deal. We'll, we'll send you in coverage sometimes, but uh, I just think he and he he excelled at that, but I think yeah, you you've nailed it on uh, on the issues. Really good college football player. Yeah, yeah, was really glad he he wound up being in Lubbock. Uh, had an opportunity to visit with him last year on Black Label Radio and, and enjoyed that, and uh, certainly enjoyed watching him play football in red and black. And you know, Sir Roderick Thompson is just a great reminder to me. Of, I, I get why you want a forty time and why you know that's. That's the most important thing ever. Shout out to Darius Hayward Bay. But Sir Roderick Thompson's greatest gift to me as a football player was making chicken soup out of chicken spit. The dude never went down at first contact. If there was only two to gain via the way the play was executed, he might have got you five just because of what he was going to be after first contact, which seems like a valuable skill set. But what the hell do I know? I'm applying for a Texas Tech basketball job right now. So I don't know if I should be speaking on pro day. Thanks. Uh, Chris, I know you got to get out of here, but I'm just curious. Do you remember the first pro day you covered that was a quote unquote actual pro day in West Texas and what it looked like or what it was like? Yeah, well, it, it's it's a well oiled machine these days. Uh, yeah, yeah. Th- this was back when you didn't have that many pro uh, prospects. And there was, you know, I want to say 10 to 12 teams 
Um, you know, I, I think Texas Tech has done a really, really good job of organizing it. And part of that is because who your coaching staff is at the time. But then, honestly, it's because – I think the NFL folks kind of help run it. I mean, they're, they're kind of in charge of some of these drills. It's like kind of, you know, the, 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 they want to make sure they get good times and, and all these things. It's funny. We're talking about 40 times. You know, you know, there's another guy who I bet tests really, really well. And I don't think it's NFL type draft pick or anything, but I bet he gets an opportunity because he can run. And that's Chad Townsend. Just could never play hmm. here because he wasn't healthy. But, I mean, nobody has ever questioned his speed, which is why multiple coaching staffs here were just so intrigued by what he possibly could bring to the table uh, just because he could just flat out fly straight line speed. So if, if, if he runs a 4-3 or something crazy uh, today, it's not going to shock me a bit. Uh, but, okay. you know, I, I wouldn't say he, he just doesn't have a lot. Uh, on on tape in the last couple of years because he's been dinged up. But I just uh, – yeah, but it's the event has changed a lot, and you hinted at something. We'll get out of here in a second, but you hinted at something. It sounds like the Big 12 may be kind of having a a group play day here, yeah. but they're going to call it pro day there in Frisco. <laughs> yeah, and, and I, I think it's pretty smart because you can really maximize all of these athletes uh, – you, you know, put, really, really give them a, a stage uh, and, and you can, you know, I don't know how this will work if it's just an NFL or you can invite other things too, but at the Cowboys facilities, I mean, it's genius. And it's, I don't know if it's a reason why I'm for sure going to want to go play in the big 12, but this is also something that I wouldn't be surprised. And you, you remember that I said this, it's not as me if Brett Yormark figures out a way to televise this uh, to to make it an event of sorts, and we get everybody under one roof, i.e., how the NFL Network does the uh, the, the the combine in Indianapolis, and and gives you two or three days. I find it to be very boring television. I just can't do it. I love the draft. To me, it's just boring <laughs> watching these guys run up and down the field and and all that stuff. But but there's revenue to be made because somebody's interested in it. That's true. Yeah, I. I... I used to just try to take in a Rich Eisen running a 40 uh, in a suit, but I've even lost touch with that. Uh, no way. But yeah, if you can make a buck off of it, or if it's something, look, yeah, like you said, it's not something that's probably going to lead a kid to say, well, I'm going to go here instead of the SEC or whatever because of this. But it's also not something that's a disadvantage. It hurts nothing. Oh, yeah, and I yeah. kind of feel like this is your degree program until it's not football or whatever sport you're playing. So if that's one more step, in, I guess, emphasizing or improving your ability to pursue that profession makes sense to fit it in. So I'm sure if it gets off the ground and has any steam behind it, uh, everyone else will copy the same thing. But kudos to Brett Yormark for uh, stepping out there once again and, and trying to be innovative with what the league is doing. Okay, some interesting stuff there to consider as well from a pro day perspective. Rising tide lifts all boats. That tide's name is Tyree Wilson. So best of luck to all out there maybe getting some eyes on them that possibly wouldn't have been there otherwise. You're exactly right. I think that's an interesting way uh, to frame what will be happening on campus today. All right, stick with us on Locked on Texas Tech throughout the week again as we are nearing resolution within the Texas Tech head coaching search. I'm saying it because I believe it, not just because I want you to come back. I really think it is going to happen. We gave you that Locked on Texas Tech guarantee last week. A head coach will be named at some point in the future for Texas Tech men's basketball. Is anybody else even saying that? No, probably just us right here on Locked on Texas Tech. Uh, Chris, thanks for the time and perspectives as always. Enjoy it, man. Appreciate it, man. We'll uh, patient Raider being patient. I think you coined that phrase the other day. So uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll continue to uh, sit and wait, right. man. Yeah, Keep hope alive, everybody. That's right. Subscribe on YouTube so you miss nothing whenever it is actually going down. <laughs> Thanks for making us your first listen each day. And be sure to make Locked On College Basketball your second listen right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. For Chris Level, I'm Casey Callen. We'll see you on the other side on Locked On Texas Tech.